Quick recap on the brachial plexus. The brachial plexus has got five parts, and the roots of the brachial plexus are formed by the ventral rami of C5 through T1, and the superior trunk is formed by the union of C5 and C6. And C7 will continue as the middle trunk, and the inferior trunk is formed by the union of C8 and T1. Each trunk will further be divided into anterior and posterior division, anterior and posterior, anterior posterior, anterior and posterior division. How are we going to form codes? Uh, the lateral cord is formed by the union of the anterior division of the superior trunk and the middle trunk the medial cord is formed by as a continuation of the anterior division of the inferior trunk and then the posterior cord will be formed by the union of all posterior divisions all the posterior division will combine to form the posterior cord and all these cords are in relationship with axillary axillary artery each cord will further form two terminal branches two terminal branches and the lateral cord will form the mastocutaneous nerve, nerve and the lateral division uh, the lateral division of the median nerve the medial cord will form the ulnar nerve and the medial division of the um, median nerve from the posterior cord, we also have two terminal branches. The first one is the biggest one is the radial nerve, and the, rad and the other one is the axillary, axillary nerve. We also have other branches that are coming from the roots, from the trunks, and, and so on. From the roots, the two important, uh, the two, three important branches are uh, the dorsal scapular nerve. We know the muscles are separated by the dorsal scapula, but we have C5 contribution to the phrenic nerve. We remember the phrenic nerve C3, 4, and 5, and also have. Um, also have the long thoracic nerve, the long thoracic nerve, which is taking contribution of C5, C6, uh, and C7. From the trunks, we also have two um, uh, important branches from the uh, trunks, which is superior to the suprascapular nerve and the nerve to subclavius muscle. We know all these nerves. And we don't have branches from divisions. The divisions do not give any branch, but from the cord, we also have a bunch of branches. From the lateral cord, we have the lateral pectoral nerve, nerve and uh, ansa pectoralis. This ansa pectoralis uh, is, is a contribution is a contribution from the lateral pectoral nerve that is going to the medial pectoral nerve to supply the uh, pectoralis minor muscle. But also from the medial cord, we have the uh, medial brachial cutaneous nerve and the medial antebrachial cutaneous nerve. From posterior cord, we have three uh, subscapular nerves. We have the upper subscapular, middle subscapular, and the lower subscapular. The middle subscapular is also called um, uh, the thoracodosal nerve, the famous uh, thoracodosal nerve. And these are the terminal branches that we have already uh, seen how they originate. Two important, two important injuries we discussed about the abduction, um, abduction prosy or abduction paralysis, uh, which is um, injury to the superior part, the superior uh, uh, part of the brachial plexus, which may affect C5 and C6. And presentation, it is uh, waiter tip deformity, waiter tip deformity. These are the main mechanisms that are, um, you know, resulting in two the um, abstusion. We also have uh, injury to the inferior part, the inferior part of the brachial plexus or inferior trunk of the brachial plexus. Uh, which is uh, which can cause cramp paralysis, which presents with claw hand, claw hand. The root affected is inferior, inferior division, inferior trunk, or at C8 and T1, and we can also have, can also have uh, some other uh, injuries that may result in two claw hand deformity and many mechanism being the hyper abduction traction. If you want details, go to the main video, uh, the main video of the brachial plexus. Yeah, this is it about it.